Chapter 7 How Can All Things Work Together for Good? Yes, how can they? Christians love to quote this verse to other people who have troubles. But how many of us really believe it? How many have put Romans 8.28 to a test, and more importantly, have been tested by it? How can death, accidents, personal failures, and predicaments work for our good? Is this just Christian sour grapes rationalizing? Before deciding, look more closely at what Paul actually says. Romans chapter 8 verses 28 to 30. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him and he gave them right standing with himself, and he promised them his glory. Not why, but to what end? Does Romans 8.28 make sense for the Christian? Perfect sense. In fact, it makes sense only for the Christian. Let's read this verse again. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. Emphasis added. Here is the all-important condition those who love God. Loving God is something a Christian certainly wants to do. We love him because he first loved us, 1 John 4.19. Problem is, it's easier to love God when things are going well than when things are going wrong. In fact, that is a good test. How much do I love God when the going gets rough? Do I let circumstances get the best of me? Instead of loving God and trusting him when things go wrong, I can always resort to self-pity. There is nobody I would rather feel sorry for than myself. But feeling sorry for myself doesn't get me anywhere. Is Romans 8.28 trying to tell me that God is in my circumstances? He has allowed this thing to happen? The disappointment, this frustration, perhaps even a tragedy? But if I know that God loves me and I love Him, then my question is not why, but to what end? But perhaps I decide not to feel mere self-pity over circumstances. I can always give way to discouragement. Everything is going against me. The ball just isn't bouncing my way. Nobody understands. Nobody cares about what I am trying to do. Nobody wants to help. Nobody? Romans 8.28 says, Those who love God. 1 John 4.19 says that we love God because he first loved us. And so here I am, my circumstances, myself, and God. Here's where religion is not enough. I need a person, someone who understands, someone who cares, who will help me off the floor to try again. Christ is ready to do this if I am willing to respond to his love with love and trust of my own. But of course, if I really want to go down the tube of circumstances, I can become bitter. You've met people who are bitter. Life has played a dirty trick on them. They just didn't get the breaks. When Christians become bitter against life, against the church, even against God, they cut themselves off from the resource they need most, knowing that God loves them and will help them. But there is one more condition to Romans 8.28. God causes everything to work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose for them, emphasis added, or as the Living Bible puts it, are fitting into his plans. And just what are his plans? Go on to verse 29. God's purpose is that we become like his son. This doesn't mean we are to become celestial carbon copies. God always gives freedom to choose, to be an individual, a person. But God also knows our weaknesses, our problems, our sins. He sends circumstances into our lives, circumstances that work much as a sculptor works on stone, chipping away that temper or trimming away the pride, the deceit, the jealousy. Each Christian is a different creation, but God works on us all for our good with his son as the model. When you read Romans 8.28 in context, 
you begin to see how things do work together for good. No matter what happens, we know that behind it is God's plan, purpose, and above all, his love. Paul goes on to talk about that love as he brings Romans 8 to a climax. He has left the death valley of Romans 7 far behind. He's about to finish scaling a spiritual peak that towers higher than Mount Everest. Through Christ, Paul knows that he is more than a conqueror. Romans chapter 8 verses 31 through 39. What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't God, who gave us Christ, also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Will God? No, he is the one who has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ Jesus? No, for he is the one who died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death? Even the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't and life can't. The angels can't and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The greatest power we know. Can you believe this? Will you believe this? If you will, God can change your life. You will be able to live confidently no matter what tests may come your way. No matter what happens, nothing can change God's love for you. That's worth thinking about when danger, trouble, an accident, or death strikes. Sometimes Christians feel that they should be delivered from accident, sickness, and death. And when troubles come, they ask, why did God let this happen to me? The Bible does not promise escape from suffering. If it did, then everybody would become a Christian, just to avoid accidents, troubles, heart attacks, cancer. That might be a good motive for being religious, but it's a poor motive for being a Christian. Instead, God offers us his presence in all of life's troubles. He tells us that nothing can ever shake his love for us. For the Christian, every cloud doesn't have a silver lining. But behind the clouds, the sun is always shining. Prose really can't do these last lines of Romans 8 justice. But perhaps the following poem by Ralph Carmichael begins to catch the substance of Paul's thought. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us so. The Christ that dwells within us is the greatest power we know. He will fight besides us, though the enemy is great. Who can stand against us? He's the captain of our fate. Then we will conquer, never fear. So let the battle rage. He has promised to be near until the end of age. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us so. The Christ that dwells within us is the greatest power we know. The Christ who dwells within you is the key to sanctification, to having power to live the Christian life. Believe Christ. Trust him, walk with him in the spirit, respond to his love with your own. This is the difference between being a Christian and settling for being religious. For further thought, number one, memorize Romans 8.28 from the New Living Translation. Focus on the phrase, God causes everything to work together and list any problems, setbacks, or defeats you are now facing. Next, list the victories, accomplishments, and progress you are now enjoying. Number two, 
Read Romans 8, 28 to 30 in as many Bible translations as you can. Do you feel called according to his purpose? Compare this passage with Ephesians 1, 5, 11 and 1 Peter 1, 2, 20. What is God's purpose for you? Number three, compare Romans 8, 37 to 39 with 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 58. Then write a brief statement that begins with overwhelming victory is mine through Jesus Christ because.